This lecture is presented by the Neuroengineering Lab at the Biomedical Engineering Department at Lin Shopping University. The presentation describes the procedure followed to model, simulate, and visualize the electric field generated by deep brain simulation electrodes. The methodology to build patient-specific models was first presented by Ostrom et al. in 2009. However, the Neuroengineering Lab initiated modeling and simulations of electrodes used in neurosurgery around 20 years ago with a comparison between in vitro studies and finite element method simulations. Since then, several studies based on finite element models have been published by our group, for instance, to investigate the effect of cysts surrounding the DVS electrode, the influence of the tissue heterogeneity, the influence of the lead design, and the operating mode. References to these and other publications are noted in blue, at each slide, and a list of them can be found at the end of the presentation. Effectiveness of DVS to reduce symptoms of movement disorders is well known, nevertheless, scientific understanding of the mechanisms of action of its therapeutic effect remains elusive. Comparing models of DVS have contributed to obtain insights of the spatial extent of activation and being a useful tool for the parameter selection at the programming stage. Compare models in principle aim to predict the stimulation field. More sophisticated and complex models have achieved this on an individual patient basis. Patient-specific models developed at our department aim to visualize the electric field, which depends on the biophysical properties of the tissue and the stimulation parameters. The theoretical basis of modern computer models relies on mathematical descriptions and findings of experimental investigations. In principle, for a cathodic monopolar configuration, the DVS system and the patient's body form a closed electrical circuit where the implanted pulse generator, the IPG, is the energy source that generates an electric current. The electric current flows through the subcutaneous extension and lead wires to the active electrode, shown in orange. The current then crosses the electrode tissue interface and flows back to the case of the IPG, which is acting as the anode. In applications such as DVS, the relatively large electrodes inject current into the extracellular space surrounding the neuronal elements. The electric current causes a redistribution of the electric potentials in the tissue, generating an electric field capable to trigger action potentials by the excitation mechanisms first described by Hodgkin and Hugely in 1952. The electric current is distributed in a three-dimensional medium, the so-called volume conductor. This volume conductor is the region around the DVS leads and is considered as the brain model, the blue box in the figure. The shape of the medium should not contribute to the electric field distribution close to the electrode. It can be spherical or cylindrical, for instance. We use the rectangular shape due to the MRI format. Thus, the DVS model consists of the brain model and the lead model, which is based on the geometry of the specific lead to be used. As an example here, a conventional lead model 3389 manufactured by Medtronic. This lead has four platinum medium contacts or electrodes of 1.5 mm length separated by 0.5 mm of insulation material. But other designs such as directional leads can also be used. The electric field is computed inside the brain model and is mathematically described by the continuity equation for steady currents, where del or nabla is the differential operator, j the current density, and sigma the electrical conductivity. At the macroscopic level, the volume conductor is considered linear, therefore satisfying Ohm's law. The electric field then is described by a partial differential equation which for complex geometries cannot be solved analytically, hence the finite element method is used to approximate the solution numerically. The method approximates the solution of a continuous function by dividing the domain into several small finite elements with a simple geometry creating a mesh. The mesh is numerically represented by a system of algebraic equations to be solved for nodes of the nodes. In order to increase the accuracy of the solution, the density of the mesh should be as fine as possible, especially where high gradients are expected. 
For DVS, the highest changes are close to the electrodes, therefore the mesh is denser around them. So how do we build the brain model and execute the simulations? For the brain model, we use an in-house MATLAB program called ELMA. ELMA is a graphical user interface used to convert the medical images, MRI or CT scans, into data files readable by the finite element method software console multiphysics. ELMA output is a set of files containing an interpolation matrix with values of the electrical conductivity, the preparative and postoperative image matrix, the position of the image dataset in Cartesian coordinates, and the dimensions of the model. These files are then loaded into COM software along the brain and the lead geometry and the simulation parameters. The simulations can be computed. In detail, ELMA is used to load the medical images either from DICOM, NIFTY, or pre-processed MATLAB files, and then step by step the model is created. So an example, the T2 image to the left is first cropped to a region of interest around the DVS target. The image batch is also reduced in the Z direction. The MR images are then segmented based on the image intensities. The user may draw a line as the blue one shown in the image to display the intensity values along it, or draw an ellipse to obtain an average intensity value inside it. Those values are entered to the dialog box, including the frequency and pulse width, which affect the electrical conductivity. The result of the classification derives in a conductivity matrix shown in the figure to the right. Here the image color goes from the lowest electrical conductivity, around 0.07, corresponding to the white matter, to the highest value around 2 Siemens per meter, corresponding to the cerebrospinal fluid. Depending on the image modality, T2, T1, or proton density, the tissue types appear different. For instance, the CSF is darker in T1 images, therefore the lower values in the image. The image modality is selectable in the dialog box. The conductivity image, however, presents the same color code. The brain and the lead models are drawn in the film software comes from multiphysics. The center of the brain model is positioned at the coordinates obtained from ELMA. The leads are initially drawn aligned to the set direction and then rotated according to the coordinates obtained from the leads artifacts visible in the postoperative CT scan. Specifically, the legs of coordinates of the middle point of the lowest electrode and a more proximal point are obtained and converted to Cartesian coordinates. Details regarding the calculations of the angle and the Cartesian coordinates can be found in the Hydropoly proceeding by Johansson et al. 2019. With the geometry of the brain model and the leads ready, the boundary conditions are set in order to solve the governing equation. For a monopolar configuration, the ground or returning electrode is set to the walls of the box. The active contact is set to the simulation amplitude, either voltage or current. The non-active electrodes are set to floating potential. The shaft is set to electrical insulation. For a bipolar configuration in turn, the walls of the box are set to electrical insulation and the returning electrode can be another contact of the lead as shown in the figure to the right. The model may also consider a tissue electrode interface or peri-electrode space assigned with a corresponding electrical conductivity determined by the time point of implantation. This is represented with a yellow surrounding. For acute conditions, for instance, this region presents a higher conductivity compared to a chronic time point several weeks post-implantation where fibrous tissue is attached to the lead. Once the computation is run, the electric field may be visualized in different ways, as a surface plot as shown in the actual cut plane to the left, or with isofield contours and surfaces. Our group uses a fixed ISO level of 0.2 volts per millimeter. The representation of the electric field in this way is useful to make relative comparisons between patients and studies. 
Furthermore, the electric field can be superimposed to the patient image and show the region with the limits of this electric field magnitude using an isocontour. The rationale behind the selection of this specific value relies on results of activation distances from simulations that have considered the neural model. So an example, the schematic to the left shows a DBS lead surrounded by lines in different directions representing axons. The axons placed orthogonally to the active electrode are the ones more likely to be activated. The potential distribution obtained by the field model is then used with the neuronal cable model, which is used to calculate how far the potential can activate the axons. The neuron model depicted to the right considers variables such as the neuron diameter, the internal length, and the pulse width of the simulation pulse to determine the axonal activation in response to the DBS stimulation. According to those simulations, the activation distance for fiber diameter between 3 and 3.5 micrometers approximately, using a simulation amplitude with 60 microseconds, pulse width and 3 volts is around 3.5 millimeters. Similar distance is achieved with an electric field ISO level of 0.2 volts per millimeter. This correspondence can be used to visualize the simulation field based on fixed values of the electric field as long as the pulse width and the fiber diameter are stated earlier. For neurons of different sizes or simulation amplitudes with different pulse widths, the electric field threshold must be revised. Experimental studies by Hemetal and Kunzelital have shown a similar threshold of neuronal activation. In summary, patient-specific DBS computer models are created from the patient images using an in-house developed software called ELMA and the FIM commercial software comes from Multiphysics. Besides the patient images, the configuration of the DBS system and the localization of the lead must be known. The simulations allow the visualization of the electric field and its superposition to the patient images for further analysis. Here we present a clinical case where a Parkinsonian patient was implanted in the subthalamic nucleus. The lead used was the conventional 3389 model from Medtronic operated in voltage mode. The T2 image was segmented to obtain the conductivity matrix using ELMA and the lead localization was provided by the surgeon who noted the coordinates from the artifacts shown in the postoperative CT scan. The 3D model shows several slices of the corresponding conductivity values. The first electrode was set to 3 volts in a monopolar configuration, and the same model was used to simulate current control stimulation. For this patient in particular, a similar extension of the electric field was achieved using 2.7 mA. Models allow a non-invasive theoretical prediction of multiple scenarios and represent a useful tool to aid neurosurgeons in the visualization of the effect from simulation parameters. Models have been used offline so far to investigate different cases and analyze the influence of different parameters on the electric field. The aim of our group is to provide a visualization tool in real time for the use of neurosurgeons, neurologists, and clinical staff in order to get insights of the potential simulation field patient specifically. We thank the support received from the Swedish Foundation for Strategic Research and the Swedish Research Council.